Today, we are talking about somatic sex coaching, but what is it and how can it help you? I'm Patrick Moreno, and this is Queerly Us. He's a somatic sex coach and my friend, Vance Hedman. Vance. Hey. Welcome to my podcast. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Well, we've worked together a few times now. Mm -hmm. uh, if people follow me on YouTube, you've probably you probably recognize Vance from some of our videos together. Uh, we talk about sex, we've talked about his coaching, but you know, a podcast format is so much better, I think, for this kind of topic because we can just take our time and really like dig in deep. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, yeah, I'm all in. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, first of all explain to us exactly like what what does somatic mean because a lot of people are not going to be familiar with that term uh a somatic practice is all about the nervous system so it is about feeling your emotions feeling sensations in your body but uh focus on uh triggers like shame and anxiety and noticing how that affects uh you and your expression as a person so things like somatic practices are like yoga, dance, like meditation, movement, so that they all help to like calm your nervous system. Because when you're in your fight or flight, which is when your sympathetic nervous system is activated, then uh, it changes the way that you are in my work in connection and how you're dealing with the present situation. So you want to try to come back into your body to feel relaxed enough to be able to um, connect, feel pleasure, whatever it is that um, you want to do. So so like in more layman's terms, is it like <laughs> it, it's getting in touch with your emotions to have better sex? Uh, well, it's nope. just understanding. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> yeah, no, not uh, even close, Patrick. Sorry. <laughs> OK, well, it, uh, it can't be, so like so a lot of some uh, general somatic practitioners work with people with trauma. Right. And so in my work, because okay. I work with queer men, uh, being queer is traumatic. And so we've learned that there's a lot of shame that we internalize. And so it comes up when we're in relationship uh, or when we're mm. with another person, right? Because there's mm. this fear that we won't be loved for who we are, mm. but that actually shows up in your nervous system. Mm. So um, it could be in, in comes to sex, right? Like so many guys that might have like a lot of internalized shame with that then as soon as you're in that situation, then your body thinks, oh, I can't do this because this is wrong. And so your body's oh. going to go into fight, flight, or freeze. And so it's up to you to figure out like, oh, I'm get triggered. And now I have to come back into my body to feel that pleasure because you can't really feel pleasure when your body thinks it's in danger. Vance, I'm like tearing up. Like I'm getting, oh, yeah. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Being just wait tell you what the work is yes yeah <laughs> i'm like i'm Can gonna I cry why? i don't well because you're talking about this shame and this like in turn all this internal like, like i think i i feel like I can only speak for myself but i'm assuming many gay men feel like i do we have so much internalized homophobia and all of this shame and guilt and about who we are and we just don't we just don't love ourselves the way other people are able to love themselves because they grew up in a society that you know, holds everything that they up on a pedestal and pushes us down. So there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot. I think we have PTSD, I think, as a, as a community. And, you know, we're still well, working uh, through. So yeah. PTSD, which is. What, oh, what did I say? You said PTSD, but I'm, what I'm, there's a thing called CPTSD. Oh, okay. Which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, and okay. what people have to understand is that, first of all, everyone has trauma. There is right, it's just different right. levels of trauma. Sure. And so uh, the thing that we like, this is where my work is about understanding that like being humiliated is trauma. Um, mm. uh, being not included in things or not feeling like we're loved or seen is trauma. And so, because I think when we think of trauma, we think of like you're in a car abuse. accident or you were or, raped. Or, yeah, right? exact physical abuse or yeah. emotional. And so, like, yeah, but complex means that it's like a drawn out thing. So like growing up as a queer person, you have those on like sometimes a daily basis, these feelings of, oh, something's wrong with me. 
I'm not worthy of love. Mm -hmm. I'm getting made mm -hmm. fun of. Mm -hmm. My parents don't like me. I'm not mm -hmm. understood. All those things create trauma, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, thank you for the clarification. And that's yeah, why you're yeah, here yeah. because you're the yeah, expert. Yeah. Well, so that yeah. leads me to my next question then. How did you get into this? I mean, how does one get into somatic sex coaching? Like what drew you to it? Um, well, the somatic part of it was because I'm a yoga teacher. So I mm. always knew about somatic practitioners and it's part of teaching yoga too, is the somatic aspect. Right. Uh, so that was what made me decide to do that. Uh, but the sex coaching itself was, uh, because I started to explore sex work and I was seeing that there was a lot of, I mean, I was even seeing this just with my friends, but I was seeing there was a lot of guys that were struggling with, uh, just finding connection. So whether that meant like having better sex or being in a relationship, but I was like, Oh God. And they're all saying the same things. Like lots of guys being like getting into my head when I have sex and I'm like, I don't like the way I look. So I get really nervous. I can't stay hard. Um, no one loves me like all these kind of similar things. So I yeah. was like, Oh, uh, I think this is what I want to start doing. Um, and then I just had one incident with a guy that a client of teaching yoga that, uh, was really like eye opening because he, uh, he just ended up committing suicide and it was kind of a big, game changer and being like wow this is like this is a really serious issue mm. um and i wish i could have known what to do in that situation and mm -hmm. yeah so that was a big moment to be like oh i need to start to explore what i can do <laughs> that's like the biggest moment yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I, I and i love that you were able to recognize that you know, if you're having these issues and these problems and these questions and these concerns and your friends are that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of other people are, are going to be going through the same thing. And you use the word connection. So maybe you can help explain to us what an authentic connection or authentic connection. What does that mean? What does that uh, look like? What does that look like? It means that you're actually being yourself, like you're connecting in a way that, uh, like me and you here together, I'm going to fully be myself. And so, uh, let's say if we were just like, yeah, if just we were, just, uh, well, maybe you're not, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if we were just hanging out, are you somatic sex coaching me right now? Yeah. So if we were just hanging out. Uh, um, no, I lost my train of thought. Um, Sorry, that was my fault. Authentic, authentic connection. connection okay. Yeah, authentic connection. So Oh, so like, let's say if we're just hanging out. And um, you ask me how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And let's say I'm going through a really hard time. And I'm like, Oh, I'm good. Everything's fine, or whatever. That's not right. really authentic connection, right? We're just and then we'll just probably talk about like, um, so how's work? Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, I went on a trip, da da, da whatever, all that, mm -hmm. you know, superficial mm -hmm. stuff. And but if you ask me how I'm doing, and I said, I've actually had a really hard month, uh, I'm going through a breakup, then and if you said, Oh, like, oh, I'm sorry, that happened. Um, mm -hmm. Well, do you want to talk about it? That's authentic connection, right? Mm. Um, authentic connection can still be like, life is great. Uh, I just got promoted at work or whatever. That stuff yeah, is authentic as well. But it's <laughs> good about stuff being... happens too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's about being able to be like, I'm fully going to be myself in this moment. Um, and let's say if when it comes to sex, mm. then it's like, we could be having sex. And let's say I'm in my head. And I stop and say, I need a moment just because like, I'm in my head right now, I'm really stressed out. And it's okay, if we just like lay here and talk for a second. Mm. That's authentic connection as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think a lot of guys are just like, I won't say anything, because I don't want to wreck the moment. And it's like, well, now you're being inauthentic and you're faking something so mm -hmm. that you can keep someone else around, mm -hmm. which isn't authentic. No. Because you should be able to say, like, what you're feeling, where you are in that moment. Yeah. And hopefully, and it's also not a guarantee that that person is going to hold that space for you. Mm -hmm. But um, but you'll know that if that person does, then yeah. you'll find more connection. Well, and you're doing both of yourself a disservice by being inauthentic because you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not being authentic to your and then you're also being fake to the person. So they might be enjoying what you're giving them, but it's not the real you anyway. So you're both kind of like losing out. Um, yeah, I, I totally resonate with what you're saying, because 
I feel like I try to be, and more and more as I, as I get older, and that's on my YouTube channel, I try to be as authentic and vulnerable as I can. And, and cause I think it's, it's something that as a culture or um, we're not very good at, like you said, it's like, how's it going? Good. Are you good? Mm -hmm. So I, I find myself a lot of times when people ask me how I'm doing, if I'm not doing great, I'm just like, meh, you know, and then sometimes they yeah. ask me, well, is something wrong or, or a lot of times they don't, but at least it's a more authentic answer because I'm just meh, like I'm not great, yeah. you know, so yeah. what you're saying is really, and I feel like, um, I mean, there's social life and then, and there's sex life. And I feel like in sex life, it's even harder to be authentic than in social life because sex is so, it's still taboo, you know, it's still like lives in the shadows and a lot of our reference is porn and porn is not authentic or a lot of porn is not there's yeah. there's there's a few things that are coming out now that are more supposed to be more authentically you know two people connecting um sexually authentically but historically speaking you know i love yeah, yeah. porn i love porn but yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i love it yeah. <laughs> But it's it's not very authentic at all because it's just this glossy sort of edited together thing, yeah. and that that's how people feel that they're supposed to connect, you know. Yeah. During sex, so you have a yeah, lot. Well, of, you got a lot of work to do, Vance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just oh, that's how we learned how to have sex. Most yeah. gay men is from porn because no yeah. one else told us, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't think that people probably still are telling us. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, it goes across everyone, like that's, as you said, like there's such a stigma on it that on sex, it's just like, people are just so uncomfortable talking about it. Yeah. Um, and so we do a lot of comparison of like, oh, well, I need to be that in sex. And instead of just being like, what do I really like? What are mm -hmm. my fantasies and kinks? And what mm -hmm. type of uh, partner do I want? What type of relationship do I want? Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of like paying mm -hmm. attention to everything else and thinking I should have that. Yep. I, as I get older, and I don't know if this is true for other people, but I, as I age, I'm getting more comfortable with and more attuned to what I want and in sex and what, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting better at that is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Then, then and what was it? Oh, yeah. What was it? What do you think is the difference because of your age? Like, what were you doing when you were younger that's different now? I was doing everyone because my libido was so high and and uh -huh. i said and i said this before it was like in my 20s i was having like like every day like i would just have to yeah. go out and seek it and i remember thinking in my 20s god i can't wait till this slows down so i can concentrate on other things and, <laughs> yeah and, and that's happening now so like my libido has slowed down and i kind of like my mind isn't always on that it, i can concentrate mm -hmm. it on other things and I, maybe those other things are well who am i <laughs> and you know yeah. what do i enjoy doing and, and what what you know is good for me and what gets me off and i i to me it's an age thing and it just comes with experience it comes with um seeing seeing a situation and being able to draw conclusions from it like oh okay I, i've been here before do i want to keep going down this road or maybe i'll just mm -hmm. stop this situation now and i don't know just learning from the past being wiser now yeah and, I think it's just part of getting older and it's one of the best parts of getting older too. I mean, in my experience, do you think you were having good, like, uh, so when you're having sex with everyone in your twenties, everyone, like literally everybody. Yeah. So was every, <laughs> like, was the majority of sexual experiences good? No. Like were you walking away from everything being like, Oh good. I got mine. That was good. I feel mm -hmm. myself. no, no, I just got off. And then just like, they were just, just racking them up. Yeah. I just, no, I don't think so. I, I think my standards well, like, yeah, so were what I, what I, like, <laughs> my standards the reason why were lower. Is, yeah, well, well, because like what I'm, uh, so what I, I know I was saying someone about this the other day, is that like, I was like, I'm a slut, but like, I will not go out and have sex with someone unless there's like a 75% guarantee that it's going to be like decent sex. Mm -hmm. And so like, I know to understand of like the type of guy I want to be with, like the buildup of it. Uh, so I can't just do like a grinder hookup because I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. lots of times I'll go on that and be like, I might as well just jerk off. Like I left my house for that. Like hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I I'm wasted much rather two jerk hours. Off. Yep. I'm so much like, rather what jerk it, off. Were you, yeah. did that happen in your twenties? Like, nope. was it that? Or you nope. were like, oh, it's. 
I think everything was kind of new. So every experience was just kind of like the first time. So I guess I didn't, Oh, okay. yeah, I didn't really know. So I would just, yeah, I'll go and do that because I haven't done that before or bit or Mm haven't hmm been with this person or in this situation. And, but now I can be like, oh, wait, I've been here before. So was that worth it? Should I just jerk off? I was going to say also, mm like, hmm I'm a little bit, I feel I'd correct me if I'm wrong. I'm a little bit more spontaneous and I like public sex mm hmm and stuff like this, where you're a little bit more demisexual, where you need a more emotional connection, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could have an emotional connection with public sex, but I'll say that, like, Oh. public <laughs> sex when I'm around, I don't like public sex when it's, like, if I was uh, out in the actual public, like, if I'm at a, you know, party, a gay party, like, that's different. I like that. I like to be watched, but I don't like the feeling of if we get caught, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. i'm going to That jail gets my yeah yeah nervous system too activated. sure So, uh But yeah, I need to know that like, oh, I'm going to still enjoy this experience with this person and I feel comfortable with them. And then we can explore whatever we want, right? yes because you feel more comfortable with somebody you know though no or am i Uh, yeah, overstepping but I have to spend at least like a half hour having a coffee with them. Like, it's not about like, Oh, okay. um, I don't have to know you for 20 I need, years. It's just like, yeah. let's, let's chat a little first. Yeah, because there's just been guys Mm. like, I mean, I have, I've had this with clients where I, you know, it's the first time meeting them and I'm like, oh my God, you're making me feel so, uh, you're pushing my boundaries. You're making me feel uncomfortable. Um, and that's a different, like I can control that situation. But when you're trying to have a hookup and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, you are just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> like, Well, you know, I need to actually just sit and like talk to someone and be like, okay, this guy's a good guy. yeah, at, at least, at least on the surface, Yeah. good, good enough. I see. I, the less you talk about, the less you talk, the better, because I just need to create who I think you are in my head and then I can enjoy the experience. And then the more you talk, the more you're just going to destroy my fantasy. And then I don't, I don't need the talking. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's that's one way I'm a way little to do bit it. more anonymous. Um, I think Yeah. you said you mentioned something about vulnerability. So and, and this is this is a big word. And I think it's kind of a, a newish word. I feel like the word vulnerability being vulnerable historically has been especially for men has been like, you don't that's a bad thing. Being vulnerable is not a good thing. You have to be a man, you have to stand up, you have to be hard, you know, chin up. Uh, don't show emotions. Don't. So I think I feel like in the last 20 years or so, being vulnerable has kind of come out of the closet, so to speak, I guess. And then it's it's OK to be vulnerable. It's OK to not be OK. It's OK to be vulnerable. It's OK to. And I guess that translates into sex as well. So maybe you can. What What, what is vulnerability in sex? What does that look like? Uh, well, I think every, uh, experience that when you have sex with someone is a vulnerable experience. You don't know how people are going to take you. And, and so, I mean, even when you first meet someone, right. Or if you go on a random hookup, I mean, I've heard stories of guys Mm that like show up to their grinder hookup and the guy is like, oh, you don't look like who I thought you were. You need to go. And it's like, oh, that's a really vulnerable experience to -hmm. Yeah. They said that show to up you? and have sex. That never happened to me. Uh, Oh! but, <laughs> but Not no, me. I, No, no, yeah. I'm just saying I heard it. It's happened to people before, but not me. When I just want to, you know, when I don't, I don't do that. I don't do grinder hookups. Oh, Again, right, it's okay. like, I think it's like, Yeah. uh, right. But, um, Yeah. I, I've heard that all the time. I've like, I've had clients say about, um, uh, you know, just they'll be in the middle of sex and they'll be like, you know what, actually I can't do this because you didn't look like your picture. And Oh, yeah. so there's a lot of, um, Yep. Okay, I got it. not good ways of dealing with it because also I would say that like I wouldn't want that person to go through with the sexual experience they don't want to go through but there's a way to do it that's compassionate and kind still it's probably still going to make the other person feel disappointed and hurt but you don't have to be an asshole um Correct. Yeah. yeah I think I feel and so like, yeah, go on. oh yeah I was just gonna say go move on to like why vul sex is vulnerable it's just Hmm. that um you know like just fully being naked um like everyone has body image stuff and not everyone feels great about their body so that's vulnerable because that's Do going you? to come up right do i feel bad about my body Hmm. Do you have, do, do you feel vulnerable being naked? uh yeah i do um Because you're naked a lot, right?
Uh, well, actually, I'm only naked in certain situations when it's appropriate. Like, uh, well, obviously, like so. For example, like I'm not a, a nudist. Like the idea of walking down the street naked does not yeah. sound appealing to me. Me neither. Um, but I get how it can bring feelings of uh, feelings of being free and all that yeah. stuff for people. Yeah. But I mean, I don't even walk around my house naked. I uh, I will be like, I need to put some underwear on. It just feels too like, I don't know. I I feel too. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. it, it doesn't make me feel comfortable. It's that that's hilarious. So we we have that in common, which is funny, because there's a lot of I mean, like your Instagram is very um, skin heavy. That sounds gross. Skin heavy. It sounds like a horror movie, like a leather face. But I can relate to what you're saying, because back in the day when I was doing porn in LA, you know, I mean, you're naked, you're a porn star. So like, you're having sex on camera. So obviously, you're an exhibitionist. But there's this weird thing that when the cameras went off, everyone else is sitting around nude they all got boners and stuff they're all chatting and i have my little robe i put my little robe on and my little slippers yeah. and because i didn't want to be naked in that moment like it was just when the cameras are on and, and we're filming and we're having sex yeah no problem but the cameras go off i'm like oh okay put my little robe on and just get cozy and it was not not because i was ashamed of my body but just there was yeah i, I guess i'm not a nudist or I don't know what it is. It's weird, I find right? that it's like if I think for me and what I've tried to understand about it is that I think that I attach sex to being naked, which is, I think, not um, uh, like because I get like so if you're a nudist and you're hanging out like a nudist colony. Yeah, it's you're just naked because it feels good. Right. Yeah, It's not about the and sex. Right. So for me, though, I'll get it if I was in that situation. And being naked, I would automatically be like, my mind would feel like this is a sexual situation, but it's not. So this doesn't feel right. And right. so, and I think that's just like, whatever my, I don't know, my experiences and stuff have made me feel that way. But uh, um, yeah, it just makes me feel uncomfortable, which is like back to the somatic aspect is like, that sometimes makes people feel really good in their body. For me, it doesn't. I don't really mm -hmm. like just being naked for no reason. Yeah. Because there's something in me that makes it feel like it feels uncomfortable to be naked around people for no reason. Like, even if I'm at the gym and in the locker room, like, if I change, I'm changing quick. Or if I go to the shower, like, towels on when I go to the shower. Like, I don't walk around naked. Mm -hmm. To me, it's, like, too... Yeah. Maybe to me, it's, like, too much... Uh, I don't want the attention on me. And if there is... Because we will look... Like, if there's a naked person walking around, most likely you're going to notice that person. Yeah, you're gonna look at them. Yeah. Right. So, so you. Yeah. <laughs> so in the locker room, you're making sure to wear a towel because you don't want to tempt anyone to have sex with you. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Vance, my good. Okay, there's no ego problems over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I have that too. I wonder if if that's all it is. I hope it's not some weird trauma thing that we that we have buried and we're not like dealing with. I think it, I mean, it could be just the fact that I think that when we, when, how we are, uh, the way our society and culture is, though, it is like, it is inappropriate to be nude and we've gotten that messaging. Yeah. And so it's okay if you don't want to be naked. Like, that's the other thing about my work is that I don't tell people to be like, mm. you know, I don't push them over the edge of their nervous system to be like, uh, just go do this. I would be like, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And yeah. so it's like that for me is like, okay, well, probably all that messaging of being naked is just like, I just don't want to walk around naked because to me, I've learned that it's like inappropriate, which I know mm. it's not a right. naked body should be fine. But for me and my body, it doesn't feel comfortable. So like, I choose not to be naked for no reason. But I understand why for someone else, it would feel great. I totally get it. I actually wish I was one of those naked people. I think it, oh, it, yeah. looks, yeah. it looks well, it looks like fun, you know, and it looks yeah. very freeing and stuff. It's just not something that I'm interested in. And do you go naked at the beach? Never. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, unless, well, it, I have, but I was very uncomfortable. Hmm. Yeah. Right. I, uh, yeah, same thing with me is like, uh, if I didn't know anybody, but I'm usually there with like friends and stuff. So that's even worse. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to be naked around my friends me either for no reason. But some people do. They love it. They don't care. Yeah, yeah. They're all all the oh, friends yeah. are naked and they're hanging out. And I'm like, I kind of admire that. Like, there seems to be this kind of like, I don't care that yeah. I, that I don't have. 
And you but know. again, that's like for some people it's fine, some people it's not. It's all good. But then those same people probably don't have sex on camera, or or maybe they do. Yeah. But maybe maybe they don't. Maybe for them that's their line where they're just like, no, that's yeah, that's where I draw the line. So it's funny where how we're all yeah. different. Before I go on, I I wanna I wanna talk about um your coaching business before we get too far because. I, if somebody's listening to this and they're like, okay, well, you know, we're talking about, you know, different aspects of sex and all of this stuff, but, but like, maybe you can help illustrate what, what kind of, who comes to you? Like, what kind of clients do you have? What, what, what do you do for them? You know, a little bit about your coaching mm, setup, like that, who, who is your client? Uh, I mean, people. not names, <laughs> not. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> no names. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, like a, a examples, a, examples of the type of person that would come to you seeking your services, and then what you would be, how you would be helping them. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, it is queer men or queer people socialized as men. So, could, you know, when I say that, I mean, um, you know, you could be trans or non-binary, but if, uh, if you grew up as uh being labeled as a, a a boy or man or whatever then mm -hmm. you're socialized as a man so you're going to get all that um societal messaging right and so okay. that's why i say uh queer people socialize as men because okay. uh it's a lot of my work is the shame that comes with being a man mm -hmm. um and our inability to be able to be emotional to be vulnerable um to find deeper connections but the I think for what most guys that do come to me uh, and the ones that are, are really serious about the work are guys that are at a place in their life where they want to really prioritize uh, their pleasure and be happy with themselves. Like they've just gone to this place where I think like feeling lonely, not feeling understood, feeling scared to be themselves. And I think lots of guys that are just really tired of living that way and really want to start to feel like they can live as their more authentic self. So uh, are these people, people that come to you, are they, if I'm single, can I come to you? If I'm in a couple, can I come to you? Yeah, totally. Both. Yeah. So yeah. it's, and, and it's all, and it's going to be, so say I'm single and I'm just unhappy. Uh, I'm having issues. I, I'm stuck maybe uh, within my sex life mm -hmm. type of situation, right? Yeah, or I mean, you could be just someone single. That's I, It could be all those things, right? It could be like, I, I want to explore more of my sexuality and my fantasies that I've never gotten to do because I feel bad about myself or I'm insecure. Or I do want deeper relationships, uh, whether it's with a partner or, you know, friendships, right? And yeah. I don't know how to get that. Okay. Um, these are people that are really, I mean, it sounds like somebody who is self-aware enough, but maybe doesn't have the tools to get to the next level, but they're, they're aware that, okay, I need some help. Yeah. Uh, I mean, cause I think that, uh, when I look around, I'm like, a lot of people could use this work. Uh, well, but I I'm also sure. think Every, probably everybody. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone I mean, could use this work. Yeah. But I, I've learned that it's like you have to have the self awareness enough to be like, uh, it's so, like, in a nutshell, what <clears throat> I do is teach guys to be authentic. And mm. that's really what it is. No matter what mm. the issue is, it is like always back to that place. Okay. And um, I think there's just so many of us that are still trying to uh, find happiness and fulfillment through superficial things or, uh, you know, like, it's like, we all want like, we all want, uh, more friends and to be included with things, but, um, maybe all we're doing is like going out a lot and like being around people when really it's like, you want someone to actually understand you. And that actually takes work. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure. Yeah. And work doesn't sound like fun. A lot of people don't want to do the work. They just want to, you know, have the answers or just be fixed and then but the right. thing is you know and i was watching uh uh so brene brown is like right yep. the woman uh the top guys if you don't know person. brene brown come on just yeah. Go <laughs> yeah google the bitch you'll see yeah yeah <laughs> she's everywhere uh yeah uh, everything on vulnerability right but i yeah. was watching 
her talk about this and being like, so guys will be like, it's like how you said, like guys, uh, people don't want to do the work because work doesn't sound fun. And mm -hmm. it's like, what she was saying though, she's like, do you not see though that like you're just living in whatever you're dealing with? So like, you don't want to do the work. You don't want to face this stuff. You don't want to talk about things. You don't want to move through discomfort, but instead you're just letting all of that shame control your life and you're in it. And the reason why you don't feel great is because that shame is controlling your life. So either you gain self-awareness uh, mm. or you stay in it and you'll stay in it forever. Right. So yeah. like, <laughs> it's like you either, like you either do the work or you're like still unhappy. Like you're not, it's not comfortable to be in that. And as you get yeah. older, I think it starts to get louder and more painful. Yeah. Um, and so it's best to like, just, Face it head on, right? By reaching out to Vance Hedman, somatic yes, sex yeah. coach, <laughs> right? Yes. Well, yeah, that's a good sure. step. And like you said, everybody needs it. Every everybody, everybody, yeah, everybody. Everybody needs to gain self awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that um, I had posted this thing yesterday because uh, Sam Smith is getting a lot of uh, mm -hmm. hate body about shaming. their body. Yeah, yeah, because they're a bigger person and. Uh, they so Ugh. it's and it's from a lot of i guess the I, like i don't know i'm not reading these comments but apparently it's a lot of queer people that are judging and shaming them and it's like okay well that's our own hate about ourselves that we have yeah. that's coming out so i and i said this that i was like i can understand like not feeling happy about yourself and you're seeing someone thriving and living in joy and being fully right. free in their body. And you go like, well, fuck that person because I'm not there. Yeah. And you'll have that thought and that's normal. <clears throat> yeah. But the idea of like, oh, I'm going to let that shame instead make me angry. Now I have to do something about it. Oh, if I judge them and make them feel bad, then it's going to make me feel better for maybe like a minute. <laughs> and then so, but it's like, yeah. that's how the shame controls you. Right. So like, yeah it's making you react to everything without self-awareness. The self-awareness, yeah. it's not about making that be like, oh, that didn't bother me at all. It's about being like, oh, that really bothered me. Why did it bother me? Oh, Why this is my own me? shame yeah. about my body. And is there um, something that I can do to, you know, fix that in me? Yeah. You know, internal, not external. Yeah. Um, and a, a big part of it is just learning to be understanding the societal expectations, right? So it's like, you might not like your body, but like, why? You know, there's certain things that are like healthy ways to look at it of being like, oh, I'm, I'm unhappy with my body because I don't feel good. I've been like, I've been living really unhealthy lifestyle. I feel sick. Mm -hmm. I feel tired. I want to change that. That's totally healthy and normal. But yeah. to be like, oh, I don't have a great, I'm not a, I don't have this fit, perfect body. I hate right. it. Right. It's like, well, that message didn't come from you. That came no. from all Everywhere. the other messaging. <laughs> Everywhere so you else. You can at least be like, oh, wait a minute. I'm yeah. going to actually start to fight that messaging. Yeah. And try to change it or try to work on it. Yeah. It's like, even I say to clients that like, look at yourself in the mirror and like the first things or take a picture of yourself. And I, I do this with clients too, right? I try to get them to take their straps and like, they don't have to post them. They don't, they can just, but like, yeah. look at what you see yeah. and see that like, you're automatically gonna be like, oh, I hate this. I hate this or I hate this or whatever. And it's like, hey, yeah. just notice that though. Yeah. Notice what you hate. Yeah. Okay. Great. Now, can you at least like try to find some like acceptance? So it's not about being like, oh, I love those things that I hate now, but being like, you know what? I might not like that, but what do I like? Yeah. And start to like, be like, okay, well, there's, there's going to be things about myself that I don't like, but what else do I like? And also being like, do, is it that bad? So like, for me, like I have body dysmorphia. So like, I always have this thing of feeling like I'm not good enough because I'm not muscular enough. I'm not masculine enough. That's like my internal messaging. So like, I'm always in this, like, I'm too skinny. Um, I wish my arms were bigger, but I'm like, again, I have to like fight that messaging and also be like, am I seeing what everyone else is seeing? Like, you're not even, no, you are, uh, your, your arms are pretty skinny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine I'm a, I'm a slender man. I'm a lean, mean, I man. totally know. You know what it is? Okay, I'll tell you what I do. This is a trick that I do. Okay. <clears throat> I try to look at myself, I catch my reflection somewhere, like say I'm at the gym, and I'll see my reflection. And then I look at myself as if I'm someone else. Like, I, I say, mm -hmm. to, I literally say to myself, if I saw myself, I would be so into me. 
Mm -hmm. And it's true. Like if I saw a version of me, at, if I saw my exact person at the gym, I would be like, oh yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I know, I know me and I know what I like. So, but when I say that, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, oh, oh my God, I'm so fucking hot. I'm just saying yeah. like, I'm looking at myself through someone else's eyes. And mm -hmm. for me, that's my tool to be like, hey, things are not that bad. Because the other half of the times I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, that's gross. What is that? Where did that come from? Why do I look this way? Yeah, <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like all yeah. those, all those, that checklist of things that we go mm -hmm. through that we hate about ourselves. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like what the tool that I use to kind of counteract that. I'm like, oh yeah, mm, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but me being someone else looking at me yeah i don't know i remember even like trixie and katya the drag queens talking about yeah. it one time and they yeah. were like basically everything you're saying to yourself is a lie so you might as well make it a good one because uh, really it is like you could look at yourself love in the mirror and be yes. like i'm so hot totally it's like well that's also like under whose stand like what are the standards yes. of that right like there's no. no truth to it like you can make up any statement i'm ugly or true i yeah. mean I, i'm ugly or hot but or both hot. can it be doesn't... true so you might as well choose the one that's uh that feels but that makes you look better <laughs> and you're both of the you are ugly and you're hot like you know what i mean yeah yeah, like, yeah so it just yeah i love that a few years ago like i was reading about the different love languages and how people express or like to receive love differently and I, before that i had no idea and that helped clarify so much for me because when i realized that my partner at the time uh wanted to receive love in a different way than i'm used than than i prefer showing love i was like oh that's maybe we're not a good match so <laughs> um <laughs> so so those those are the love languages but i know that there are also relationship different relationship styles right yes so maybe you can was that a weird segue? I just when i when, well, I, heard, I, will when, say, when i when i heard relationship so styles I, I heard i thought of the love languages because there's different ways for love and then i guess there's different relationship styles <laughs> does that make sense uh yes i will say that uh the so the love language thing i uh i never read the book and i've heard some things about the guy that wrote it um i'm not gonna say anything about it because i oh my god what like, no no just say it what he's a crackhead or something <laughs> no apparently so i saw a thing on he's a fraud. Instagram. so nothing I, against I crackheads by the way because uh, i used to yeah. be one anyway go on <laughs> So I, um, uh, I, again, I saw this on Instagram, so I didn't, I didn't do my research to be like, if this is true, is this completely true and stuff. But apparently the guy who wrote the love languages is, allegedly, uh, was, uh, like a priest and okay. without like any, or a minister or something like that. And he's like, he okay. has no, um, psychological training at all. And he had like come up with this concept and it is a really good concept, but, yeah. um, there's a lot of like heteronormative stuff in it that it's like I, when people like you just said about like oh maybe we're not a good match but the thing about it is like it's not about like that's what i think is problematic about it is that so if i'm all about uh so this happened in a relationship with me where the one person was really like gifts gift giving gifts was his love language right because uh -huh. i think that's what i love yeah, me yeah, it's not yeah i no. fucking hate shopping i'm not gonna do it i like yeah. it's a lot of work it's like for anybody, I don't care who you are, boyfriend, mother, kid, whatever. Like I hate fucking shopping. I, I just, I hate it. So I, and I'm just bad at it. It just stresses me out. So like, to me, it doesn't make me feel good to give you a gift. Like when it happens spontaneously, but, but when I feel- It makes them feel good. Exactly. So, but the thing about it is that um, that's what he needed. But for me, it's like a completely different experience for doing it. And so, yeah. but he didn't get that to me, to him, it was, you're selfish like I, you only think about yourself you don't want to be dating the same person yeah <laughs> yeah it sounds familiar anyway go on um it could have just been another uh guy who knows another nothing about another it. superficial gift loving person yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh got it um oh. so but the thing is what what the what in my work i would have said is yeah. if i was coaching myself uh <laughs> is i would say that it's like okay well you have to understand this is really important to him and so you have to like put a little bit of an effort into that as well because that's mm. how he feels like he needs to be loved but it mm. doesn't have to be like shopping for gifts all the time right it means that like maybe you like cook dinner for him or like you do these other things that make him feel like you're giving something to him right well and that, so okay 
Oh, okay. Okay. Can, I got it. Well, so that's now how, that I know yeah. what I need to do, then it's like, okay, well I can do that. But there also has to be this, like, I can, you have to understand for me, the reason why I'm not good at it is because of my own like anxiety about shopping. So it has nothing to do with you. And so yeah. as soon as you can understand that, it's like, oh, okay, well, I don't need someone that's going to give me gifts all the time that it's like, cause I think what the, with the love language thing, it's like, oh, you find that person that kind of fits the thing with what your what yeah. your love language works with but it's like yeah. well one you can just teach the person how to do it and also why are you expecting that person to be everything maybe you have a friend that gives you a lot of gifts that like you can be like okay well i don't need you to give me all these gifts because i have someone else in my life that does and that. also go buy your own gifts yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> right that's what i always say like at christmas i'm like why don't we just all go and buy ourselves something Vance, I'm not even kidding. Everybody makes fun of me. Every single Christmas, I buy my own presents. I, I like, <laughs> no, I do. And I wrap them and I put them under the tree because guess what? I deserve it. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and why should I expect other people to shell out money and go and like you said, you have anxiety when you're shopping. So don't worry about it. I'll buy my own gifts. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm exactly. responsible for like my own Christmas financial shit too i don't expect everyone to be like able to like cough up this money every christmas it's like yeah, yeah. you know what if you have the extra money buy yourself something yeah, but I, which i do you know what to get you that's <laughs> we're, we're on the same page here so yeah, then, yeah. Then, then what what are the relationship styles let's get into that then okay uh yeah so well relationship styles are just being like uh monogamy non-monogamy single oh, polyamorous gotcha. okay um whatever it is that works for you. And there's all these other like things that could be like in the middle of those things, right? So mm -hmm. for example, like um, if I'm, I like to be single, but like, I also want deeper connections with men that are, that fulfill those needs. But like being in a partner type relationship might be too anxiety inducing and it might actually be like harder on my life than um, not having that. And so I'll be like, okay, well I do have those types of relationships with men, mm -hmm. uh, but, they're friends. They're not like my boyfriends, but I, I, I still can get that like intense um, intimacy and connection with them, just as I would with a boyfriend. But the boyfriend adds all this like commitment, and I need to always be there. And I'm talking like hypothetically. I'm talking about myself. Oh, so I was, I, I was going to ask yeah. you, yeah, because yeah. it sounds very like personal <laughs> what you're saying. Okay, well, is there, is this is an example. That, that there okay. is parts of that that I, I do I do need the like intimacy with lots of different types of guys or just other men in my life. So but I also mm -hmm. am like I could I don't think I could be polyamorous. So this is me now. I okay. I don't think I could be polyamorous because I'm like, oh god, it would just like fuck up with my system of like I need to feel special and like if they you know, I feel like one loves someone else more than me or likes it would just like yeah. it would be way too hard on my nerves. So I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um but everyone is different, right? And that's the the point of this is that everyone feels like they need to find a partner. Yeah. And it's like, you don't, again, societal messaging that says like, you're not good enough until you have a partner. And I think there's a lot of problems where we think that it's all about romance and like everything is fine and dandy. And it's like, that's not really what a relationship yeah. is. If you yeah. want just romance, then just go like fuck around with guys for like, you know, the month that it is romantic and then yeah, you know the, the like, first couple of months and then yeah you know, that dies and then move yeah on. and then you can go on <laughs> like, to the next thing but be clear about it be clear that like you're just looking for you yeah. know that casual thing so you can feel that that romance feeling um so uh, the way that i work is i am like a serial relationship person so i'll mm -hmm. be in a i mean long-termish relationship like years and then it ends and then i'm in another one like mm -hmm. quickly but like we're living together so mm -hmm. um but but the the weird thing is that i'm also fiercely independent so i and i love being alone so i'm stuck in this weird but i love being in a relationship too like i i love mm -hmm. having that body on the couch maybe i should just get like a mm -hmm. blow up, a blow up doll or something but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that works or a pet a or you do have a dog. I do, yeah. It, it yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't I don't need my partner anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's like I I I do and I love cooking for somebody. Like I love like it's dinner time and I'm cooking and I love preparing the meal knowing that I'm going to be sharing this with somebody. So, I do like having somebody in my life, but there's many times where it's like I almost need like and this happened in Sex and the City, I think. 
where Carrie and Mr. Big, they were like, they, they, they were married and they were living together, but then they had weekends off where she would go back to her, her apartment and they would just like, I guess on the weekends live separately. And I totally get that. Like, that's my kind of relationship. I could totally live that way. I mean, you could, I just each have your own place and never really move into each other, move in with each other. Cause you could still like, hey, like still be with each other and spend nights with each other. But yes. some people like knowing you have a place to go yeah. or you can just be a, like by yourself or do your yeah. own thing. Some yeah. people yeah. need that. I do. I do. I, if, if literally, honestly, if I had the money, I would buy a little like studio condo apartment and that would be one of my refuge that I would go to. Yeah. And I would spend a couple of days, like maybe weekends or something. Yeah. You know, um, anyway. I mean, that, Susan me. Sarandon said it once really great that marriage really is just like a state of mind or like it's how you feel in your mind. So like yeah. all of these things, it's like, um, like for me, I don't think I would be good at being married, even though like maybe one day I could be in like a decades long relationship relationship and all that yeah. stuff that you yeah. know but marriage for some reason would i think create this like oh my god i'm trapped yeah i'm because i do because i would know i i would know that it would take a lot to get out of this yeah um a lot more than just being like we're broken up and mm -hmm. that might create too much anxiety that i wouldn't even be able to enjoy the relationship mm. and so for me i'm like i will never get married because like it's just gonna make it would feel like getting a job where they were like yeah okay well you're stuck here for for this amount of time i'd be like oh yeah. my god i don't know if i want to do that i i don't know what's going to happen in five years right yeah. and so um but some people feel like i think that they get a feeling of security of like oh i got it i don't have to worry about that i yeah. feel more secure that we're married and so that just feels better for the person so again the somatic well, part yeah. is and that it's how you feel right and well, yeah i guess it's a feeling of well i've locked them down and it's safe for me, I know that if I'm in it, I'm in it. So I'm not going anywhere. So I don't have to marry you. Like we don't have to be married for me to be committed. Like I'm not like with my partner now, we're not, we're not married. Um, we're, I guess we're technically engaged because he proposed and okay. I said, and I said, yes, I said, yes. And we can enjoy a long engagement. And it's been like six years where we've been engaged. So <laughs> like what, <laughs> you yeah. We're not getting married. Like we're just going to stay engaged, because yeah. <laughs> for me, yeah. for me, the engagement. To get the gifts. It, it well, <laughs> it, being engaged is the fun part because it's it's like it's like the oh this is like excitement. So like, why would you lose that? Like, just stay yeah, engaged. Yeah. Like, I don't need <laughs> yeah, to be married. Yeah. And I did the marriage thing, and look how that turned out. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, very interesting. I feel like I think though I would say the one thing about commitment. So like that's my opinion on all that stuff is like yeah. you know, it's to each their own whatever. But I but I think the commitment aspect of like the thing that you actually have to do for people is you actually have to fucking show up. So like mm. you can marry someone, but that doesn't mean that you're going to fucking show up for me every day in my life or when yeah. I need you the most. That yeah. doesn't the you know, that's not the, it's the actual showing up for me yeah, is yeah, what matters. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I have a bunch of abandonment stuff where I feel like even with friends, I'm like, I don't see someone for a while and I'm like, oh, they don't like me anymore. And they're not well, they like, don't. They're... I, I, I talked to them yesterday. They yeah, said yeah. they don't, they don't like you anymore, but anyway, yeah, well. which friend, uh, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I, so I need a person. So I have to teach the people in my life that like, I have this trauma and so I get really anxious and it's really difficult when I'll get triggered by like space and not spending time together if I haven't heard from you in a while. And so what I need from you is to to show that you're still here for me, right? In those moments. Yeah, it's yeah, not like I need yeah. you to check in every day. I'm responsible for my own stuff, but I'll be yeah. like, oh, you know, we haven't spoken in a few months and now I'm like, oh, I feel like there's something wrong and they're gone. Yeah. And so I go into this and, I, that's how I react to it. So I need people to like check in and show up for me. Yep. Yeah. A hundred percent. I totally agree. It's like, it's for me, the day to day showing up is all that I care about. I don't care that you stood up with me in front of all of our friends and you gave me a ring. And that's one day where you promised to do all this stuff. Like, fuck that. No, I need you every, yeah. I need you every day to show up and be here and, and be who, you know, 
mm-hmm. be us and be because that's where that's where the work is and that's it has nothing to do with marriage right mm-hmm. it's, it doesn't matter if you're married or not you can't you you're either that person or you're not so yeah i feel like and this is a bit of a side thing but i feel like are you a somatic relationship coach yeah so <laughs> i'm a, a sex and relationship coach <laughs> oh okay because yeah, yeah all, because we're yeah, talking so about relationships with, today. I mean, sex yeah. is part of relationships, but this is a bigger topic about relationships, not just about sex. Yeah, it's all about connection. Mm. Right? And yeah. sex, relationships, it's all sex connection, is part of it. right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so like even when I work with uh, people with like just friendships, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm. It's all the same skill. Okay. <laughs> like okay. you're... You're so um, multifaceted, fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Uh-huh. No, it didn't say anything Hmm. (laughs) for once. I thought you were. (laughs) No, I, so I have a note here about uh, being fully embodied and I have no idea how to phrase a question around that. So just what does it mean to be fully embodied? Well, so embodiment to me and is to be in your body, to authentically be feeling what you're feeling and to be present with what you're feeling. So Mm. I think when we're not embodying ourselves is when we're in our head, right? And so let's say, so anxiety is all about like fear of the past and the future, right? Mm. And so if you're in your head um, and you're like worried about something else, that's gonna affect the way that you're feeling. And so let's say if I'm really anxious right now and something's going on and I can't stop thinking about it, I'm not embodying myself, I'm somewhere else. And so, but let's say if I'm like talking to you and we're having this conversation and let's say, let's go back to the thing of like, I'm saying to you, I had a breakup and you're like, well, how are you feeling about this? And I just start talking about it and I'm feeling it and I start, you know, breaking down and I go like, I'm just so sad. I'm embodying that experience. Right. Mm. And I'm not allowing uh, anxiety or other things to like take me out of that. So Mm. if I was just like, like what a lot of guys will do is like, I feel shame about being emotional. So I'm going to just try to like keep that all in and I'll be like, it's fine. I mean, it's really hard, but it's fine. Um, Like I'm not really embodying what I'm actually feeling. Right. And so when it comes to sex, um, you want to be fully present and feeling every moment in your body. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I I always relate uh, sex to dance that um, when you're dancing, you're not, thinking about like oh I'm gonna move my arm this way next and then I'm going to you just kind of do it because you're feeling it yeah and so the closer you can get to a place where you're like just fully in your body and where moving feels effortless Mm -hmm. because it Mm -hmm. feels just right and it's not um you're just in the moment with what you're feeling and it feels like a charge or like you feel alive in your body so connected to what's happening that's how sex should feel. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you should be feeling like, oh my God, I just every sensation and this movement, and I'm just totally letting go and embodying what I'm feeling in this pleasure. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, that's a great analogy. Um, because growing up as a white kid <laughs> yeah. and and being um, you know, our, our culture of dance was so different. Like, oh, for example, my partner is Colombian. So yeah. the way that he grew, he grew up with music and the music is all about the feeling and they don't think about it. They're just, they know there's the, the steps, but there's movements that are make part of, are part of the dance. But when you're in it, you're not thinking, okay, I'm going to spin the girl three times. And that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You're just in it and then you're spinning and then you turn and then you do this and then you're moving and, and it's all just very, in in your body in the mood so Mm -hmm. for me i have i grew up the opposite of that just some white kid growing up to like you know where you dance in a circle and you just dance by yourself like this and you're not with a partner Mm -hmm. um i guess my point is that my partner's really good at sex (laughs) and Mm -hmm. i attribute that to the day or he's very comfortable with it right and Mm -hmm. i think part of that is his dance background because he grew up being in his body and, and feeling the feels um differently than i did if we're using dance as an analogy but i think it's a good one Mm -hmm. um yeah um but also like so when i'm like working with guys and i so i will make clients dance 
Uh, it's not like, really? <laughs> yeah, but it's not like, I don't make them like, it's not, I'm not making them do choreography. I'm not like five, six, seven, eight. Uh, no, the opposite, right? Probably. Yeah, it's about just moving because yeah. what I recognize, especially with men, especially, yes. well, like with gay men too. I mean, I would, maybe this is even more a problem with straight guys, but I, uh, yeah. that we're so like, we don't know how to move fluidly because we think it's too feminine. So we're so careful about being rigid and yeah like stiff and because we're just like we're not feeling the music because we're caring so much about the way we're perceived by other people yeah so i always teach guys to be like just like close your eyes like just listen to the beat and just start to like move a little bit maybe move your fingers and so like that shame is going to come up and then it's going to make you that tense rigid person yeah. and then but as soon as you start to move a little bit more your body starts to learn okay it is safe to move this way yeah. oh look at nothing happened Right, oh, wow, actually, right. like, now that I move my arm above my head, it feels safe to do it again. And yeah. so, and then yeah. all of a sudden, you're, yeah. like, you know, just totally letting it loose. And I'm like, that's sometimes what sex has to be, yeah. is that you're in your head when you first start, and it's like, okay, I'm in my head. And the other thing is, because you're with a partner, though, it'd be great if, like, people had the ability to be authentic and say, I'm in my head, yeah. can we just slow down? Yeah. Can we take our time i really want to focus on like just staying connected with you your sensations and then i can get to that place of like totally letting go well it's so i mean communication anyway is difficult just on a day-to-day -day and your interactions with people never mind during sex communicating what feels good what doesn't or what you're thinking i mean like how do you even get to that place where you're able to communicate you know, with somebody during those times, during sex? Well, I think, well, first of all, I think that, like, there's this idea that, like, what you can't speak about, like, things that, you know, you, only things that are allowed is fuck yeah and yeah, give it to me oh, and that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But you can't say, hey, hang on, can we stop for a second? I need a, <laughs> a break. Like, yeah, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that, right? And so, like, I had a guy one time where I was like, I really wanted him to come in my mouth. And so, but I wasn't able to do it. So I actually said, I was like, can, can I give you a blowjob? And can you just tell me how to do it better for you? So mm. that I can, because that's, this is what I want to do for you. So like, yeah. if I'm just giving you a blowjob and I don't even know where you're at with this, then like, just teach me how to do it better. And so, yeah, I mean, it was still hot, but it was yeah, like, of course. But you don't see guiding porn. me through it. You don't see porn like that, though. You don't no, see not in at all. a porn. They're not like, "Hey, I just want to check in with you. How are you feeling?" <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. Is everything okay? Is it? Yeah. It seems like there's something going on in your mind. Would you like to discuss or like? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's the opposite of that. So. Well, can you imagine though, if we all had the skill that it's like, uh, or if like enough of us had the skill that if one per the one person that was in their head during sex, if you could at least be attuned enough to that person, be like, I think they're in their head, to mm. say hey, are you okay? Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, because I can tell when a guy's in his head. And then so I'll kind of be like, hey, what does he need? How can I make this better? Yeah. And then but there also is a fear of being like, oh, I don't want to like, make him feel self conscious. Like if I say that, so there is that for myself as well. For but sure. I also know that I'm like, it's not going to get us anywhere if like, I don't stop and be like, how are you feeling? Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's already not going to a good place but Ooh. there's also a, 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 that fear i guess of like okay if i bring this up then i've broken the spell kind of thing and then like change or like broke the mood or whatever or right that's right. what people think and yeah. so and now, but I think now that, he's that aware that he's aware that you're aware yeah so and i think the, the fear yeah the vulnerable thing about that is that i think that like deep down a lot of guys have a fear of it's not about just like oh i don't want to break the mood but it's like oh, I don't want this guy to leave. Like, I yeah. don't want him to not want to fuck me. And yeah. so I have to like not break the mood because I want to make sure this guy is comfortable over yeah. my own comfort. Well, and you don't want to be the, the bad lay. You don't want to be the unsuccessful sexual attempt. Like, you don't want to be a story that he tells people where it's like, oh, God, this guy, right? Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, I think that a lot of times when we have sex for the first time with someone, it's not yeah. usually that great. Like, because oh, no, we have terrible. to, 
Yeah, well, well, not I wouldn't say it was terrible, but I we have to start to feel safe with someone, right? And I think the more that we feel safe with someone, we build more intimacy and we feel more comfortable to to let go a little bit more. And so that's what I always say to people: it's like the first date, first sex is like, don't make the judgment on that. Like, you know, yeah. unless it was, you know, you know, there was other red flags or something. But uh, it's like, of course, people are uncomfortable; they don't know you, so like, they're going to be a little bit more reserved and all that stuff. And so mm-hmm. just give it another go yeah what so we we i want to go back to like the relationship styles because we kind of glossed over it and i recently thought oh maybe i'm poly and then quickly realized that i had no idea what i was talking about because i couldn't be more (laughs) unpoly because (laughs) i could never well at least i was never say never because things change at this point in my life i can't see myself being comfortable uh being emotionally attached to more than one person or having my partner emotionally attached to somebody else while we're together type of thing the physicality Mm -hmm. of it like open relationship yes no -hmm. problem no problem with that but the poly aspect no and i recently discovered that about myself and i talk about sex all the time and i i feel like I know a lot and I do a lot. And I just realized that about myself. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know maybe what kind of relationship style they're in or prefer or haven't given it yeah. much thought. Or yeah. they've only accepted what has been spoon fed to them, which is because, mm-hmm. okay, for example, on my YouTube channel, I get a lot of, if I talk about open relationships or uh, going to the bathhouse and stuff like this, I get comments saying, you know, that's dirty, that's wrong. Monogamy is the only real relationship. Mm-hmm. Why Why be in a relationship if you're not going to be monogamous with that person? And so, you know, there's, it's very polarizing, very polarizing yeah. discussion. But that's like, the people that would say that, it's like, um, again, it's like it, that judgment comes from a place of like their own stuff of whatever. But um, because I think the thing is like, again, it goes back to self-awareness. Like, If you're a person that's like really jealous because maybe you have like abandonment issues, uh, then be self-aware of that and be like, it just non-monogamy does not work for me. And Mm -hmm. that's why you're Mm -hmm. doing it. It's not because it's like, this is the right way. There is no right right way. Right. The right way is whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Some people are like, I need to be open, right? Because it makes me feel more free and relaxed in my relationship because of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. lots of people are like monogamy. Like, no, that's going to make me feel like I'm trapped again. And Again, it's like, however you feel best in you. And so sometimes you just got to try it. And so um, I used to think I could do like poly and now I'm kind of like, nah, because I have a, I need to feel special. I realized that I need to be like the number one person. Um, And so I would just, it would just drive me crazy. I would get jealous too much. You know what I I call it? Emotional monogamy. (laughs) And, (laughs) and, And it's just like, I'm, I'm your number one. I'm the only one when it comes to that connection. Like that's, that's our monogamous connection is, is that. But the sex is like, I need sex outside of the relationship because otherwise I would feel trapped. But I do mm-hmm. want to be emotionally monogamous with somebody. That's my, yeah, uh, that's my thing. So it's very like, it took me a while to figure yeah, that and out. Again- yeah. And again, it's like, uh, cause I would also say to you that like, you obviously have like friends and stuff though, that you have emotional relationships with and intimacy. Of course. Yeah. That you yeah. also get something from, right? Yes. I wish we could just like, it's not about, uh, like, I, I get what you're saying about like, uh, having one person that might be like, maybe your number one that you go to that you feel like is going to be there for you and support you. Mm. Um, but the thing is like, all of these things we're just putting labels on shit and so it's like understand it's like we just need connection and so i would say to someone it's like maybe you want a boyfriend that's really great if you do but i really want you to just have like authentic connection in your life and maybe Mm -hmm. you'll start to see that like oh when i have a group of friends it makes me feel safe um i don't really need that desire for having like a boyfriend so much right and so it's like okay well i can i can have that and all of that but i would i just want connection and I think that's even for myself, my personal experience is like, I just want to be loved and understood. And so it doesn't even matter, like if it's a boyfriend or friends, but like, I realize that when I don't have that in my life, I get really depressed. Yeah. Um, and so 
I don't even care anymore who it's from. I don't have a desire to be like, <laughs> I need to have that lifelong partner. I right, just want right. to have people that can give that to me. Mm -hmm. And that feels a lot easier of an expectation than to find one person that's going to give that to me. Cause also one person can't give you everything. Oh, totally. Well, and that's what goes to that whole monogamy thing. Like, yeah. I, 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 the first thing I tell people that leave comments like that on my channel is, and I, I tell them immediately, this is an, this channel is a non-judgmental channel. We do not judge. You can have a different opinion, but you cannot judge other people's for their choices mm -hmm. and, and, and whatnot. But, but monogamy, really? <laughs> yeah. As I judge monogamy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> let's talk about eroticism and how it feels in our bodies. Yeah. So uh, kind of going off the embodiment thing, I think the, the thing what I also teach clients to do is that um, to find the thing in themselves uh, and also hopefully by themselves that they can feel eroticism or feeling alive in our bodies. So when I was like comparing dance to sex, yeah, dance gives me that same feeling. And so um, I love to create that feeling of I'm alive and I'm connected to my body. And so eroticism doesn't mean I'm horny, mm -hmm. um, okay. but it can, but yeah. it doesn't always mean that it's like, so what I try to teach is like, if you can find that power, cause I think sex is power. And when you can find your authentic sexuality and know how to get it for yourself, mm. uh, you can, um, you can use that in your life through everything that you do. Yeah. Right. And so it's not about being like, oh, I'm going to watch some porn, get horny and then go to work and do a better job. Maybe, but like. <laughs> It's like, maybe I get a massage and I feel really relaxed and feel like that sensuality through my body that's going to help me like go home and deal with my relationships better. Um, maybe I'm going to go out dancing and just feel so alive and free. That's eroticism. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? It's, you, it's, it's more than just about getting fucked and getting laid. It's about like, how do I feel like I'm passionate in my own body and alive in my own body. And that will lead to better sex. Oh, totally. Right. And it, the reason why it would lead to better sex is because you know how to get to that, that space, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that I can find that. And it means that whoever I go fuck next is going to be able to accommodate that. It yeah. just means that I can like build that energy within myself and hopefully find someone else who's going to like connect with that energy and be able to keep that going or make it better. Well, the more people that come and see you, the more people that will be able to connect. Exactly. With, with that. Vance, yeah. thank you so much for joining me on my podcast, Queerly Us. Where can people find you? Uh, on my Instagram, uh, at Vance, B-A-N-C-E, H-D-M-N. I'll, I'll put the links in the description. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Instagram? Uh, Instagram, you can find me on my twitter um yeah all those links down there i guess cool so check out his instagram vance thank you so much for joining me sharing your expertise i always love having you on and we'll do it again okay yeah thanks okay and guys i'll see you in the next episode of queerly up <laughs>